Hello friends, welcome to today's Total Nourishment Yoga Flow. We are going to be harmonizing movements with the breath, mind and the body to arrive at a state of equilibrium. Recognizing that each day is different and each day brings with it new opportunities, new perspectives. So afford yourself a moment to honor where you are at on this journey of life and tune into the breath whenever you notice the mind beginning to wander. When you feel as though you've settled into the moment, we'll transition into child's pose, sinking our hips back towards our heels, and widening the knees as much as you like to give way for the belly, the chest, perhaps resting the forehead on the mat. And for a more active variation of this asana, you might like to tent up onto the fingertips, keeping the arms engaged and elevated off the surface beneath you. Two more gradual breaths in this posture. When you're ready, we'll transition onto all fours, coming into a tabletop position. Knees are hip width distance apart. Although for this variation, we'll lower down onto our forearms so that our elbows are in line with our shoulders. We'll take a few rounds of cat and cow. Inhale, scooping the chest forward, broadening across the collarbones. Exhale, curl and round, drawing the chin to the chest, engaging the core. And either staying in this traditional variation, or you might like to create some circles with the abdomen, the chest, rotating the torso in one direction, and finding circular motions in the opposite direction. Really articulating each movement as we warm up the muscles of the core, the back, the shoulders. Once more. And when you're ready, coming to a traditional tabletop, and again, we'll take a few rounds of cat and cow finding a greater range of mobility as we flow through this variation with extended arms. Tuning into the breath. Letting go of any distractions. On your next inhale, we'll extend our right leg back, floating our right leg up at hip height, flexing the knee so the knee is in line with the hip, and we'll transition into some tiger curl cat and cows. So on our exhale, we're going to draw our knee towards our chest. Inhale, raise the leg, chest up. Exhale, curl and round knee to nose, just like this, finding stability with that tripod foundation. Finding a slight back bend with every inhale making this movement as small or as large as you like it to be. Really working on keeping the hips squared to the surface beneath you. You might like to stay with these variations or join us in tiger pose, externally rotating the left arm to grab a hold of that right foot, finding a back bend, heart opener, pivoting the chest towards the left side of whatever space you're in, maybe closing the eyes. Exhale, gently release the bind. We'll stay in three-legged dog just for a moment. And with control, guide the left palm and the right knee down. We'll take one round of cat and cow to neutralize the spine. And in your next cat variation, we'll pause and really work on breathing into that rib space around the back, engaging the core, finding length along the back of the neck. Gently release them, we'll get set up to go on the other side, extending the left leg back, floating the leg up to hip height, flexing the left knee, foot is flexed. And we'll begin to take these tiger curl cat and cow rotations. Exhale, curl and round. Inhale, broaden across the chest, lift the leg up. Exhale, knee to nose, just like this. Finding your cadence. Recognizing that there may be imbalances across both sides of the body. Accepting that this is okay. This is part of the practice. Offering yourself a loving compassion for where you're at. Either staying in a tiger curl, bird dog, or you might like to join us in tiger pose, externally rotating the right arm to grab a hold of the left leg, rotating the torso to the right, gazing up, arching the back, broadening across the heart space, engaging the core. One breath here. Seeing if you can raise the upper body a little more, lift the leg a little higher. 
Exhale, gently release the bind, coming into bird dog. One breath here. And gently guide the right arm and the left knee down with control. Again, taking a round of cat and cow. And we'll pause in cat pose to really create some space in the lumbar and sacral regions of the spine. Coming into tabletop, we'll walk our fingertips out in front, tuck the toes under as we transition into downward facing dog, raising the hips, maybe extending the legs, working on guiding the heels towards the mat, and either finding stillness or movement. Perhaps walking out the legs once or twice, keeping the shoulders squared, core engaged. Seeing if you can unclench the jaw, soften the muscles of the face. Create some space between the tops of the shoulders and the earlobes. Reequilibrating with the breath. And on your next inhale, we'll transition into three legged dog, Ikapara Adomukashvanasana, raising the right leg as we externally rotate the right hip, flex the right knee, drawing the heel towards the glutes. Shoulders stay squared. And from here, we will pivot and draw our knee towards our chest and gently guide our right foot down between the palms as we come into a supported high lunge. Taking a moment to find any adjustments, squaring the hips, being mindful to keep that right knee in line with the ankle, maybe tenting up onto the fingertips to create a little bit more space for the chest. From here, we'll transition into a revolved variation, extending our right arm skywards as we ground down through the left palm Left wrist is in line with the shoulder, as is the right arm. Gazing up towards the right fingertips, rotating the chest to the right. Really squeezing those inner thighs together so that we're lifting up and out of the pelvic bowl. And either staying here or transitioning into Namaskar Mudra, joining the palms together in prayer position, using the outer edge of that left tricep to press into the top of the right thigh, helping you lift up and out of the waist. Finding a twist, maybe gazing over that right shoulder. Staying high on the ball of that back foot. You might like to stay in this variation or extend your left arm down to the outer edge of that right foot, really facilitating a deep stretch. You might feel this along the inner seam of that left hip flexor. Finding whatever variation works for you today. And if you are down on the ground, you might like to join your palms together in prayer position. And we'll frame our front foot, lowering both palms down, stepping back into plank pose. From here, we're going to come into some single leg plank lifts. So on your next inhale, float the right leg up, keeping the foot flexed, lower down and lift. Single leg movements using that tripod foundation. You might like to keep the leg hovered the whole time or gently tap your big toe down on the floor. It's up to you. And we'll take two more single leg plank lifts on the right hand side and push back into downward facing dog, adjusting the stance as needed. Three breaths here. On your next inhale, we'll float our left leg up, coming into three-legged dog, externally rotate the left hip, flex the knee, draw the heel towards the glutes, keeping the shoulders squared. And with control, we'll transition into a tiger curl, drawing that left knee towards the chest, engaging the core, one breath here, and gently lowering that left foot down between the palms, maybe tenting up onto the fingertips as we come into a supported high lunge, squaring off the hips. Staying high on the ball of that back foot, engaging the core, softening the muscles of the face. Breathe. Maybe coming into a revolved variation, grounding down through the right palm, extending the left arm overhead, rotating the chest to the left. You might like to find a soft smile across the face to unclench the jaw. Find ease with every posture. Staying here or joining us in Namaskar Mudra as we place the outer edge of our right tricep on our left thigh, using the palms to lift up and out of the waist. 
engaging the inner thighs. Slow and controlled breaths in this posture. For a deeper variation of the stretch, you might like to guide the right palm down to the outer edge of that left foot, extending the left arm skywards, feeling a stretch along the right hip flexors. Two breaths here. And with control, we will transition into Namaskar Mudra if you are not already there. One breath in this posture, finding length, lifting up and out of the waist, the pelvic bowl. Transitioning to frame the front foot, step back into plank pose. And we'll get started with the single leg plank lifts on the left hand side, raising that leg with control, using the gluteus maximus to really activate and help lift that leg. Core is switched on, hamstrings are firing, foot is flexed. A few more slow and controlled lifts. Really working on keeping the hips squared. And push back to downward facing dog, well done. Sinking the heart towards the surface beneath you. Exhaling away any tension. We'll begin to slowly walk our feet to the top of our mat to meet our hands. Coming into Ragdoll Forward Fold. You might like to bend the knees considerably, sink back on the heels. Interlace your fingers around opposite elbow. Allow the chest, the belly to rest on the top of the thighs. And on your next inhale, we'll come up into a halfway lift, extend the legs. Exhale, fold, bend the knees. Twice more, flowing at your own rhythm. And in your own time, grounding down through the heels, we'll roll up to Tadasana, one vertebra at a time. Head and neck coming up last. Inhale, extend the arms overhead. Exhale, lower the palms to heart center. From here, we'll come into Utkatasana chair pose. Inhale, sink the hips back. Working on keeping the knees in line with the ankles, you want to be able to see your big toes. Drawing the navel towards the spine. Fingertips are lengthening the upper body. Roll the shoulders back and down. Broaden across the heart space. Exhale, forward fold. If you're feeling a little bit more opened, you might like to grab the backs of the calves. Softening the muscles of the face. From here, we'll heel toe the feet towards the edge of the mat, coming into a yogi squat, malasana, garlands pose, heels in, toes out. You might like to keep your fingers on the mat for support or join your palms together at heart center using the triceps to press the legs open, really stretching into the groin, the inner thighs. Engaging that core. If this is inaccessible to you, you might like to place a block underneath your sits bones, whatever enables you to find comfort and ease. Steady gaze. Taking one breath in garlands pose and guiding yourself onto the mat, lowering the sits bones down as we come into some core activation work. We're gonna be using a block here. It is optional, you don't have to use one. And we're going to remain in a supported Navasana boat pose variation with our feet grounded. Grabbing the block with either hand, we'll tilt the torso back and come into a twist on either side, rotating the chest and the torso, using the obliques, using the core. Simple movements, small and controlled. Finding length along the crown of the head, shoulders are rolled back and down. Staying grounded through both sits bones. Keep going. Tuning into the breath, letting go of any tension. Sometimes it's in the simple movements that offer us insight into how the mind begins to wander. So if you notice yourself mentally, emotionally leaving this space, 
simply guide yourself back with the breath. Once more either side and we'll place the block down. This time we'll raise our legs into boat pose, working on keeping the shins in line with the knees. And again, we'll begin to create these twists using the block if you like. Keeping the legs engaged, squeezing the inner thighs together and being mindful to keep a stable foundation. You might like to squeeze the feet together as well. Point the toes, it's up to you. If you notice yourself slouching into the posture, simply allow yourself to broaden across the heart space. A few more twists, you've got this. And keeping the legs raised, we will lower our block down to the side and we will stay in a traditional Navasana boat pose. You might like to place your palms under your thighs, lower the toes down, finding a variation that suits you. Keeping the core engaged, finding length in the spine. Breathing through any tension. Coming into some Navasana boat lower and lifts, we'll extend our torso and our legs and lift into boat pose. A few times like this, keeping everything engaged, lowering down as low as you can whilst keeping the upper body and the legs raised and lifting right back up. Keeping that core activated, drawing the navel towards the spine. Once more, and we'll find a seated position, lowering the chest down onto the thighs, allowing the chin to rest on the knees, finding a release. From here, we'll lower down onto our backs, one vertebra at a time. You might like to place your palms under your thighs for support. Setting up for Pawamuktanasana, wind relieving posture, abdominal exercises. We are going to draw our right knee to the chest, interlacing our fingers around the shin, extend the left leg, draw the chin to the chest and rotate, keeping the head and the shoulders off the ground, swapping from one leg to the other, keeping that core engaged, working on sinking that lower back into the surface beneath you. A few more. This is a wonderful posture to stimulate digestion, strengthen the core and find focus. Keep on going, pairing movement with breath. Once more either side and we'll draw both knees to the chest, lowering the shoulders and the back of the head onto the mat, finding a release. One breath here and we'll lower our heels down as we set up for bridge pose. We are going to peel our back off one vertebra at a time, raising the pelvis, broadening across the heart space. Exhale, lower down with control. And again, lift the hips, the lower back, the mid back, and roll down. A few more times. Really working on squeezing the inner thighs together. Knees are in line with hips. They're not knocking towards one another, nor are they splaying out wide. Seeing if you can unclench the jaw, soften the muscles of the face. Using the palms for support, if that helps you lift up and out of the pelvis. Can you raise those hips a little higher? Two more single bridge lifts and we'll stay up and pulse. Small movements, working on lifting the pelvis as high as you can, squeezing the glutes, grounding down through the heels of the feet. And for an added challenge, flexing the elbows, allowing the fingertips to face skywards, palms facing towards one another. Small movements, you've got this. Breathe. And we'll stay up and hold. Lift those hips a little bit more, broaden across the heart space. Allow yourself to release any tension, any emotions that might be stored in that region of the body. Adding on to this posture, keeping the hips raised, inhale, we'll extend our arms overhead, exhale, we'll lower down, lower the arms down, come up into a crunch, and again, float the hips up, lift the arms overhead, lower down, lift the shoulders off and crunch, flowing with the breath. 
matching the inhalation with the exhalation, really articulating each movement. When you exhale, really work on drawing that navel towards the spine, grounding the lower back into the surface beneath you, using the heels and the feet for support. A few more movements, nice and controlled. On your next exhale, we'll keep our shoulders and chest elevated and we'll raise our legs into a reverse tabletop, keeping the arms extended, fingertips engaged, palms facing towards the surface beneath you, pulsing the arms, softening the neck, relaxing the jaw, engaging that core, keeping everything drawn together. Small movements, a few more pulses. We want to work on keeping our knees in line with the hips, Shins are in line with the knees. You might like to point or flex the toes, it's up to you. Mindfully attuning to the breath, a few more pulses. Matching inhalations with exhalations. Breathing through any tension, finding your edge. Three more pulses. And release, draw the knees to the chest, allow the shoulders to melt onto the mat. And we'll come into one final supported bridge variation. We're going to raise our hips up, keeping the heels grounded. We're going to place our palms underneath our hips, the upper glutes. Keeping our left leg grounded, we are going to flex our right knee, drawing the knee towards the chest. We're going to extend that right leg towards the sky, really engaging the lower body here, keeping the hips aligned. Broadening across the heart space. Point the toes, two more slow and controlled breaths in this posture. And with control, slowly guide that right foot down onto the mat and we'll get set up to go into the other side, flexing the left knee, drawing it towards the chest, extending that left leg, pointing the toes, squaring off the hips, using the glutes, the hamstrings to lift up and out of the pelvis, supporting the lower back with the palms, one breath here and gently release, lower the left foot down with control and we'll lower down one vertebra at a time. Heel toeing the feet to the edge of the mat, allowing the knees to rest against one another, creating space for the lower back, letting go. And when you're ready, we will rock up into a seated position and we are going to place our palms underneath our shoulders. And we're gonna come into a reverse bridge, lifting up, grounding down through the heels. And we'll extend one leg at a time, keeping the hips raised, arms are extended, fingertips are facing forwards. You might like to keep the face lifted or lower the face back, it's up to you. Extending and flexing the legs. Working on evenly transferring the weight from one leg to the other, using the posterior chain to keep you elevated. And we'll come into some bridge lifts, lowering the hips and raising them up. Seeing how high you can lift that pelvis. Engaging the core, squeezing the glutes at the top, lowering down with control. Arms are engaged. Once more, and we'll stay up and pulse. Small movements, squeezing those glutes, engaging the inner thighs. This is our final strengthening exercise. We have got this. Keep those hips raised, small pulses. A few more. Breathe and we'll stay up and hold. Static lift. Engage that posterior chain. One more breath and gently release with control. Well done. Again, we'll lower down onto our backs, coming down onto the mat, drawing the knees to the chest. Two breaths in this posture, maybe rocking from side to side slightly, massaging out the lower back. And we'll come into Ananda Balasana, happy baby. Interlacing the peace fingers and the thumb around the big toes. Or you might like to grab a hold of the blade edges of the feet. Maybe extending one leg out at a time, finding a nice passive stretch for the hamstrings, the inner thighs. 
perhaps extending both legs together. Whatever variation you assume, just be mindful to keep the lower back in contact with the surface beneath you. Gently release. We'll come into Supta Baddha Konasana, supine bound angle pose. Soles of the feet together, knees are flexed, legs splay wide. You might like to place one hand on the belly, the other hand on the heart space. Reconnecting to the breath. Arriving in this moment. Letting go of any expectations you had for this class. Know and trust that it is already working for you are here in this moment. Breathe. We'll gently guide our legs down to the mat, extend our arms overhead, finding a lovely stretch in all directions. And when you're ready, rolling over to one side, staying in fetal position for as long as you like before returning to a seated posture. Allow the shoulders to roll back and down away from the ears. Find length through the crown of the head. Inhale, extend the arms overhead, join the palms together. Exhale, lower the hands to the third eye center. Affording yourself a moment to recognize the light in the teacher in you and the light in the teacher in all of us. Well done on today. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.